filming an update on the Game Boy, like I said I would. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to show some of the new features that I've got into it. I fixed the issue I was having with the sound. It's still not great, but uh, I don't know if you can hear it right now, but it's uh, a little better than it was before anyway. There's still a bit of interference. So I'm going to try to play a bit of Streets of Rage here on the Game Gear. On the Game Boy. Um, yeah. It's a little awkward. I can only do it with one hand, so just kind of move around so you can see. Yeah, yeah, see the buttons are working. Run away from everybody. Not exactly the toughest thing. So uh, you can exit out of it. This is just built into the RetroPie. Start and select together. So go back and show, show off my different systems that I've got my ROMs for on here. So, Super Nintendo, Game Gear, Game Boy. Ah, this was another thing that I hadn't worked up before. I wasn't getting enough power to the actual uh, computer in there, so I needed to uh, sort that out in, in order to get the um, Super Nintendo to emulate properly. How about here, check this out. This was kind of my holy grail game that I wanted to get on here. I actually have the cartridge for this one, but I sold my Super Nintendo, so I was looking for a fun way to play it. Now, the speaker can go louder than it is, but uh, it's a crappy little $1 speaker I bought. So if I um, put too much more into it, it really starts to overdrive. It'll probably do it this part here when it, like the, when it kicks up here. Let's listen. Yeah, so it's great for RPGs. Now, as you can see... Um, as far as Super Nintendo stuff goes, I don't actually have a full six-button control layout like a lot of people's projects do, where they actually uh, drill out and put a X and a Y button in there. Um, what I opted to do instead was to just put the two buttons on the back, like uh, Wormy did in his build, right here, with the little tack switches. Uh, and then I actually mapped those to X and Y, because I find you don't use the shoulder buttons all that much in a lot of Super Nintendo games, besides from like Street Fighter and maybe a couple other ones too, um, but you can usually get by without them. And I wanted to keep the aesthetic of like the original Game Boy, so when someone picks it up, they're like, oh cool, is this an old Game Boy? And then they look at it more and they're like, oh no, it's actually not. So I've also put a USB port in the side here, uh, and that's just so I can run it into a dock or I can plug in like a Wi-Fi dongle or something like that. Um, so I also I put this in here too, this is a uh, this switch here I can toggle on and off. Basically what it does is it reroutes the sound to come out of here and kills the amplifier. I'll turn that back on so you can hear the annoying noises. Yeah, uh, on this side here, you got your USB charging port. Now this is where the actual, that hole right there is where the actual uh, like DC 9 volt adapter would go in a normal Game Boy. Um, I'm not quite sure what I was going to do with that. I thought about maybe putting an LED light in there, desoldering the one on the back of the power boost to see that blue light kind of coming up through there, and uh, running that through. I'll show you the inside. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So here's one other kind of weird thing about my build that's not common. I made a whole bunch of mistakes when I was doing this. It was my first time doing a project like this. Uh, one second, I actually put down the phone here to pull off the battery pack, but... Uh. All right, I'm still here. I just gotta pull this off. I may have two hands. Uh, okay. Pencil isn't the best bet. I use a pen or something because I broke off the, the tab in there. So, okay, here's what I was talking about. So I pulled this open, and uh, inside here, I've actually glued my uh, my battery. Uh, 2,500 2, milliamp hour battery, 3.7 volts, uh, just right to the back of the battery pack here. So the idea was that I wanted to have it so I could, like, possibly replace them. Um and switch them out if I wasn't happy with the battery life. And I'm not going to do that just because these batteries are fairly expensive. And uh, it's kind of more of a novelty thing. Like I might play it for like 12 minutes here or there, 20 minutes here or there. But it's not the kind of thing that I will like sit down and play for uh, long periods of time necessarily. Um, the other things I did wrong with this build that I, if you're doing a similar project to avoid doing is that uh, you can see I have my Pi in there. Um, and when I was testing it out, I actually soldered all the GPIO pins onto it. Uh, and now I didn't have um, I didn't have a solder suck or anything at the time when I was doing it, 
So I have a really weird layout where the actual, the GPIO pins, I don't know if you can see it in there, but all the pins are actually still in there and I have all of the uh, buttons like wired into the pins and that's just wasting a ton of space in there. Like had I just used the pads, uh, you know, that wouldn't be such an issue. Also, um, if you're doing this too, I wired, like I had also glued my Pi in before. So I have, uh, you can see I have my micro USB that just runs up to, that basically just runs up and then I've kind of hacked it together with uh, just a USB port up there. Um, but what you could, what I'd recommend doing is before you do that, just actually uh, solder the wires to the pads on there. And then you don't have this big, all this extra wasted bulk and crap in there too, just a waste of space. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. That's the project. Hope you guys like it. Bye.